Hello girls and welcome to our video lecture on the first part of chapter 2. It's in your textbooks on pages 24 through 31. So if you want to reference your textbook, that's where you would go. And the basic idea behind this um, chapter is asking the question, why did Jesus have to come? Why was Jesus' sacrifice necessary? So your opening activity was to watch the YouTube video, Where's the Love, and to explore the lyrics on page 37. Um, and the song captures this idea beautifully. In the song they ask, well, where's the love? Why is our world so messed up? Um, if God is this loving creator, how come the world doesn't look like him? The world doesn't look like a loving God. The world's very broken. Um, so we ask the question, even if, you know, if we were made in the image of likeness, of God, why is the world like this? And the idea is, just because we're made in the image of God doesn't mean we always live up to that ideal. And in fact, um, Christians have a very um, explicit reason why we don't, and that's the idea of original sin. Uh, and St. Paul recognizes this when he writes, I do not do uh, the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. How many times have we said similar things within our minds? Why, why did I make that choice? Why did I do the wrong thing? I knew what the right thing was. Why didn't I do the right thing? Um, so that's what this chapter is sort of looking at. Um, the idea is that even though the world is broken, God didn't give up on us. Uh, in the other slide, you saw that image of a broken world. But um, God didn't give up. He promises that he's going to save mankind. So Adam and Eve reject God's goodness um, and leave a state of original justice. Um, and original holiness, but God promises he's going to save us. So from the very beginning, um, we have this drama of salvation. Um, so despite the fact that when we listen to that song, Where's the Love, the world looks messed up, God didn't give up on us. He sends Jesus to put things right. Um, and he continues to call us to make the world what it was supposed to be. Um, so the coming of Jesus is this sign that God did not settle for a messed up world. God is not settling for what we hear in the song about people dying, about people fighting. Um, Jesus' whole mes message of salvation was to stop that cycle of brokenness. So when God creates the world, um, we have a, a narrative in the Bible that describes that. We actually have two in Genesis, and we're going to look more deeply at those um, later today. But the biblical account of creation is highly symbolic. Uh, we learned about this last year. We have the literal level, the, um, the level of allegory, the level of um, anagogy. And so there aren't, it's not literally that there was Adam and Eve, there's an apple. Um, a lot of people associate their sin with sex, but there's no sex. And there's no, there's no character called the devil. Um, but this symbolic narrative helps us understand the basic, basic truths about um, human nature, so ourselves uh, as human beings, and also basic theology. Theology is trying to understand who God is. And so the story of Adam, Adam and Eve is about human nature and about um, theology and who God is. And we're going to um, re do a reading of this, and you're going to do analysis of this in a minute. Um, this is just prepping you. But as you read Genesis, remember, look for your levels of interpretation. What is an allegory or a symbol? Where are the symbols? Um, remember the level of the interpretation allegory often looks at, well, where do we see Jesus in the story? What's symbolic of the coming of Christ? Um, what's the literal level? What basic message they're trying to get across? Um, what does this story tell us about our future life, which would be the um, anagogical level? And remember, the moral level is what are the moral lessons in the story? So. God created Adam and Eve to be in a state of original holiness and original justice. Um, if you recall, you know, they lived in the garden. It was, a, you know, basically a paradise. And the original state of humanity is in a state of original holiness and original justice. Original holiness means, I'm sorry, the smart board just doesn't want to cooperate today. Original holiness is, let me try it here. Original holiness is a state of grace that would have allowed us to share in God's divine life. So basically, the way it was supposed to be, we weren't supposed to die. We were supposed to share in God's divine life in harmony with him. 
but because Adam and, Eve, Adam and Eve basically reject God, they also reject that grace. And then the idea of original justice is the idea that we would have been um, had harmony um, between man and woman. We would have had harmony within the human person. Human person. So, and what they mean by that, you might say, what does that mean to say harmony within the human person? What they mean by that is um, we have a lot of brokenness within ourselves. We have a lot of um, self-loathing and self-hatred. And the idea that one could hate themselves is actually kind of an interesting idea. How, how is it that you could hate your own self? Well, that's part of the brokenness. We're not just, our relationships be between each other aren't just broken. Our relationships within ourselves and our personal psyche is broken. So, um, finally, the harmony between man or humanity and, I'm sorry, this smart board just doesn't want to cooperate. Humanity and creation was also broken. So, um, why do we destroy the earth? Why would we destroy our home? It's a totally counterintuitive, but um, the part of the reason why we have this brokenness um, is this is an effect of us falling out of the state of grace we were originally supposed to be in. Um, so this this grace of living in holiness of God and living in, in harmony with each other was lost when um, they disobeyed God. And going back to our first prompt, that's what that song, Where's the Law of All About, is asking. Why do we live in this fallen state? Well, as, ca as Catholics and as Christians, we see this as a result of humanity's rejection of God, which is symbolically told in the story of Adam and Eve and the first people. So um, because of their first sin, um, we live in this state of brokenness. And um, we're going to get to a, a better and deeper definition of original sin next time. So for now, we're just focusing on this slide, on the idea of how we fell out of original holiness and original justice. That was the way it was supposed to be, but because we rejected God, we fell out of that state. So we have the idea that Jesus is the new Adam. In the same way that um, you know Adam was supposed to, given the chance to live in harmony with God, um, he turns away from God's promise. But Jesus um, takes on human form and comes for the purpose of salvation. And where Adam fails, um, Jesus is triumphant. And so St. Paul compared this um, in his letter to the Corinthians um, he compares Jesus to Adam and says, where one human being fails, another will come and, you know, win us salvation. So we see Jesus as the new Adam. And if Jesus is the new Adam, then Mary is the new Eve. So Mary is the new Eve. Where Eve failed um, to live up to what she was called to do, Mary stands um, sort of as the new Eve, where she was given the opportunity to follow God, and she did. So we have um, St. Paul talking about the symbolism of Jesus as the new Adam and Mary as the new Eve. So God sends um, Adam, I mean, strike that, God sends Jesus to correct Adam's mistakes. So to say that say that Jesus is the new um, Adam, is you know, Paul is using this as a, a metaphor for Jesus' saving mission to correct Adam's mistake. And um, what Yins are going to do after this, uh, you're going to um, read that story again, look at it with new eyes, look at the levels of interpretation, and look for this. Um, you learned this word last year. Uh, it's called the Proto-Evangelium. And that means it's the first revelation of God's promise of salvation. So it's in Genesis 3.15, which you'll read in just a minute. And um, it's where he promises that he will bring someone to uh, bring about salvation. And it, sa it says in the scriptures, um, there'll be an offspring of woman who will crush the head of the serpent. Um, and we call this proto-evangelium. You see your word parts here. First gospel. And what this means is, why is it the first gospel? It's because the it's the first time uh, as Christians, um, sorry, it doesn't want to write in that quarter. It's the first time that salvation um, is promised. So, for salvation, salvation, first promise of salvation. Let's write that. It's the first promise of salvation. So, as Christians, we see reading in back, um, looking back at the Old Testament, we see this story of Adam and Eve as an, as um, you know, on the allegorical, symbolic level. This is symbolic 
of the idea that, that God will send Jesus. So from the very beginning, we understand that God from the very beginning had a plan for us. Um, it wasn't messed up from the very beginning. Um, the world, God had a plan to fix the mistakes of humanity, and part of that plan is Jesus needs to bring about salvation. So what you are going to do now is you're going to take um, the quiz in your uh, Moodle lesson, uh, and then you're going to do an activity where you read the scripture on your own, answer the questions on your own in your OneNote, and then um, you will get with partners and discuss.